Uh, so hello everyone, I will be doing uh, the lab for you folks. Uh, the lab is um, for CH338, Organic Chemistry. The title of the lab is Separation of Three Compounds Using Acid-Based Extraction. Uh, the idea of the lab is we have a mixture of uh, three different solid components. Um, one is acidic, one is basic, and the other one is neutral. So we'll be using the liquid-liquid extraction method to separate this mixture into its own uh, compositions. And at the end, we'll be calculating the person recovery for our lab to, to check how accurate we um, we are, uh, I guess. Um, so a little bit, since we don't have a pre-lab, it's a little bit backstory for the lab is uh, normally organic solids are not soluble in water. So we will use the acid-base reaction technique to make the organic solids soluble in water and then perform our uh, lab goal. So as of the safety thing it goes, uh, potentially all chemical, any chemical can kill you uh, and all the chemicals are dangerous. So, um, but to be specific, uh, yeah, naphthol is uh, harmful if swallowed, inhaled, it can damage to organs through prolonged and repetitive exposure. Diethyl ether is extremely flammable. Benzoic acid is, uh, it, it can be combust combustible. Um, it can cause skin irritation. Sodium bicarb is not um, classified as hazardous. Acetanolide is harmful if swallowed. Hydrochloric acid is corrosive. So yeah, these are pretty harmful chemicals. Uh, and yeah, sodium sulfate may cause eye and skin irritation. So we have to keep that in mind while performing the lab. So <clears throat> I will now jump right into the lab procedure. Um, so I have weighed out um, one, about one gram of uh, the solid sample that has been uh, provided to me and I will be transferring the solid into the separatory funnel. This, this is a specific funnel which we use for liquid-liquid extraction technique. Uh, now this solid is insoluble in water for now. That's why we need to use an organic solvent to solubilize this and we are using diethyl ether. So 20 mils of diethyl ether I will add into the funnel. So that's the first 10 mils of it. And this is 20. Oh, 
stabilize the solid in ether I will give this a swirl again and yeah there is no solid particle in the ether layer now we will be adding sodium bicarb 10 percent sodium bicarbonate solution which is slightly basic and uh, this is used to make a salt this is used to make a salt uh, from the acidic component of our mixture um, so yeah so i will be adding 10 mils of sodium bicarbonate solution into the ether solution or ether layer and if you can if you can notice there is two different sections two different layers in the separatory funnel the bottom layer is the water layer and the top layer is the organic layer they have two distinct colors and now we will use the separation so for doing the separation we close the lid off we flip this thing we shake it and we vent it we vent this thing because there might be a buildup of carbon dioxide gas and we vent off the carbon dioxide gas time to time so that there is no explosion happening while doing the separation. So I've, I'll probably vent this for 20 seconds and then keep it for like one minute so that the layers get separated again and while setting it on the ring we must need to take off the lid so that there is no buildup of pressure inside the separatory funnel okay um, the, the water layer is getting cloudy that means the solid is getting transferred or the acidic component of our solid mixture is getting transferred to the water layer or the sodium bicarbonate layer. Um, the two layers are separated so I am going to give it another shake vent and shake and vent shake vent shake vent okay, now I rest it take the lid off to avoid the pressure build up the magic number in chemistry so probably I will do the same thing one last time and shake vent and while venting I'm pointing the, the nozzle away from myself or someone who can work next to me so I am pointing this nozzle part away from myself so that I don't get harmed or I don't harm anybody else so I rest it take the lid off wait for a couple
couple of minutes so that the layers are well separated and then we uh, we have our three chlorobenzoic acid the acidic component of our solid mixture is in the sodium bicarbonate layer by forming a sodium salt of the acid which is now soluble in water came to the sodium bicarbonate extract and we're gonna drain the sodium bicarbonate layer by opening up the valve which I'm doing right now is the sodium bicarbonate extract which has the acidic component that is 3-chlorobenzoic acid um, separated out from the solid mixture. This is the ether or organic layer um, of our solid mixture which has two components still in it. One is the acetylide and the second is to napkin. We will give uh, our organic solution with 10% sodium bicarbonate again. Um, and this time we'll be using 10 mils of the solution. So basically, we are repeating what we just did once again. This is the sodium bicarbonate solution. We cap it, we flip it, we shake it, and we drain. While resting, the lid should come off to avoid pressure buildup, as I have mentioned earlier. We wait till the layers are well separated. It looks they are well separated, so I perform shaking once more. Uh, we are shaking two different solutions so that the solid, which is soluble in basic solution can come or travel from the organic layer to the aqueous layer because the diffusion coefficient of the solid is different for two different solvent in this case ether and water to vent when performing liquid-liquid extraction because if 
you do not vent, then pressure might build up inside the closed system and it can explode the flask.
organic layer into the Orlimar flask labeled as acetanilide because remember we started with three different solids three chlorobenzoic acid two naphthol and acetanilide we have separated three chlorobenzoic acid and two naphthol by now so the organic layer now only contains acetanilide which is the basic component of uh, our mixture so we drain the organic layer into the Erlenmeyer flask sodium hydroxide extract back into the funnel and add 3 mils of diethyl ether extraction once again to reassure that our sodium hydroxide extract didn't have any acetanilide in it. Tap it, shake it, vent, shake, Bye now. 
now we have separated three parts of our solids into three different solutions. The first part is sodium bicarbonate extract, which contains the three chlorobenzoic acid. The second one is NaOH extract, which contains two naphthol, and this Orlinmar flask contains acetanil or acetanilide in ether. Okay, the next step is to dry the organic layer or the acetanilide with sodium sulfate and hydrous sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate is a hygroscopic solid which takes up all the water. So if we have any water or aqueous part in the acetanilide or in our flask, we must get rid of it by adding sodium sulfate. So we add sodium sulfate in portions. Um, after adding each portion, we give the flask a little swirl. Um, we keep on adding sodium sulfate until we see some free flowing sodium sulfate into the under the, in the flask because when sodium sulfate takes up all the water it gets lumpy so as you can see this is still lumpy so I might add some more sodium sulfate Yeah, now the solid is kind of free flowing, um, so we will stop adding sodium sulfate at this point. But always make sure that you're adding sodium sulfate to the point um, when you see the solid free flowing in the flask. So I'll keep that side. next part is to work with the organic uh, layer that is the acetanilide solution in diethyl ether because as we know uh, the organic solvents are pretty volatile so we cannot uh, keep them for a long time so we will use, use this liquid at first we will isolate acetanilide from the mixture um, for doing that we will tear a 50 ml ram bottom flask and transfer this liquid into the 50 ml ram bottom flask. Uh, the weight of this guy is 43.01 gram. So we will transfer this liquid. Uh, so this guy is the 50 ml ram bottom flask. Uh, it weighs 43.01 gram. We will transfer this liquid into the round bottom flask. We can either filter it or we can just decan it. Uh, I'll be decanning it. Make sure that you're not um, putting solid into the round bottom flask. sodium sulfate with 5 mil 
ish uh, ether, um, which I like to do in portion, by the way. So I will add uh, about like two mils of uh, diethyl ether into the acetanilide uh, Marlenmeyer flask to wash the sodium sulfate and decan the liquid into the pre can ground bottom flask, uh, 50 mils, and do it again. slightly basic component of our solid mixture. Now uh, we keep it aside and we work with the first extract that we made that is the sodium bicarbonate extract to isolate the three chlorobenzoic acid component of, of uh, the mixture. So remember, the sodium bicarbonate extract is, con is containing the sodium salt of the acidic, uh, acidic part of our solid, that is 3-chlorobenzoic acid, as the sodium salt is soluble in water. So now to get our acid back we need to acidify this solution uh, for that we'll be adding 12.1 molar uh, hydrochloric acid into into this uh, extract so for this since the acid-base reaction is uh, extremely exothermic, we'll be using an ice bath. We put the ice bath to cool the sodium bicarbonate extract, and then we add concentrated sulfuric acid dropwise until uh, the concentrated hydrochloric acid dropwise. Um, until the pH of the solution gets to 1 to 2 pH and we'll be using uh, the pH strips for checking the pH of the solution uh, as you can see uh, pH 1 will give you a red color and pH 2 will give you uh, an orange color so we are going for the red color of the PA strip. So I'm dropwise adding hydrochloric acid into the bicarb solution. As you can see there is effervescence coming out. Uh, that is the carbon dioxide getting released from the I'll give it a swirl and yeah there is white precipitate coming out of, uh, of the extract as I'm adding um, the hydrochloric acid. This white precipitate is uh, the chlorobenzoic acid of the original mixture. Add and then swirl. Still releasing carbon. 
carbon dioxide, that means it is not um, acidic yet.
sodium bicarbonate is tracked with the solid into the butanol. Set up. We'll be washing the crude product with ice cold water. of the solid a little bit so that the solid can interact with the filter paper more and get dried off pretty easily. Subtract from the original mass and get the weight of the 
has to travel. So I have hooked the round bottom flask to the rotovap. The pump's on. We have turned the pump on and the liquid is evaporating due to the suction of the pump. We can lower this a little bit. This, uh, I'm pretty sure that you have used this apparatus before. Um, it has three parts in it. Uh, this part is the water bath or the heat bath. We are not using any heat um, for this experiment because we are removing uh, ether down, which is pretty volatile. This part is, is the trap uh, where the solvent comes off. And this part is the condenser, which is recondensing the vapor of the ether back to liquid ether in this big trap. So the working principle is pretty simple. This is a phase transition from liquid to gas. Uh, and we are reducing the pressure inside this tiny round bottom flask so that the phase change or phase transition can happen at room temperature but if you need higher temperature you can turn the heat on of this water bath and at the end we will be able to see uh, the solid material in the round bottom flask once all the liquid is evaporated into the solvent trap. Okay, so now we can see the white solid in the brown bottom flask. So I might stop rotovapping. I turned off the rotation. As you can see, there's solid inside. I'm lifting this thing up slowly, turning the vac off and shutting down the whole machine and taking it off oh first we need to vent the air uh, and yeah this is uh this is the acetanolide uh now i will be working with the sodium hydroxide extract to isolate to naphtho for that we will be cooling the extract down using an ice bath and then add HCl 12.1 molar that is concentrated hydrochloric acid similarly in a dropwise fashion until the solution is acidic that is the pH is about like one or two and we'll check that with the pH test strips so while adding hydrochloric acid always remember to add it drop wise because well this time we are adding it in uh, sodium hydroxide solution so there, is, there should be no effervescence but last time we 
added this to a bicarb solution where you get carbon dioxide coming out of the solution. Between each addition, give it a swirl and put it back on the ice bath because the reaction between a strong acid that is hydrochloric acid and a strong base sodium uh, sodium hydroxide is very exothermic so it might explode the heat might explode uh, the glass world so since we have added some acid, I will test the pH of the solution like I did before. So take the glass rod. Uh, I'll take the glass rod put it in the and put a tiny drop on the test strip and yeah it's pretty red in color so I will add a little bit of more acid to for the reassurance and the pH is pretty close to one this is a good stopping point for the addition of acid. So the next step is to pour the aqueous mixture into a separatory funnel and uh, rinse the Orwinmar flask with diethyl ether. So this is the separatory funnel that we used earlier. It's basically the idea behind this is to take the solid back into the organic phase or the organic solution. So this is the sodium hydroxide, acidified sodium hydroxide layer. So now we can see the white solid, whitish solid, uh, which has been phased out of the aqueous layer. We're adding diethyl ether into it so that the solid gets solubilized again into the organic layer and we're basically going to extract or do the same thing that we did earlier. So we're adding the diethyl ether into this. Two times, that means 20 mils of diethyl ether. So I like to rinse this dye. I'm gonna extract the aqueous layer. So cap it, flip it, shake, and vent. Shake.
do it three times and keep it at rest now you can see there is no white solid because all the solid that was in the aqueous layer came to the organic layer because uh, the solid is insoluble in water and soluble in the ether. I will give it one more shake, one more round of shake and bend. Then we are good to go. Okay. Yeah, comes off. So the bottom layer is is aqueous layer, and the top layer is organic layer. We do not need the aqueous layer at this point because our solid of interest, that is two naphtha is already transferred to the ether layer so we consider the aqueous part as waste and we're collecting it in a beaker marked as aqueous waste. We let the water drain out. into the round bottom flask 
make sure that you don't put the solid into the round bottom glass because it might interfere in your further procedure. Uh, I will give the sodium sulfate a wash with diethyl ether with about like five mils of uh, diethyl ether you can do it in portion or you can do it at once I'm doing it at once swirl and then decant be working with the diethyl ether uh, extract or solution of two naphthol and will evaporate the ether off and we have our solid two naphthol in the round bottle flask. In closing, I would like to show you uh, that we started off uh, this three component solid mixture, uh, one, which had acetanolide as one component, two naphthol as the other, and three chlorobenzoic acid. So by performing this lab, we are able to isolate three chlorobenzoic acid two naphthol and acetanolide in separate uh, containers. Uh, now we will perform melting point experiments with each of the solids in order to get or comment on their purity uh, and we will provide that to you as data.